Hello, my beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Today's episode was originally supposed to be about good and evil. I was going to talk about the relationship between how we perceive things that are good versus things that are evil um, and how when we're creating things as human beings, whatever it is that we're making, right? Um, it's not about the end. Some people do have specific intentions behind it, um, good versus evil, and like you know what it's used sometimes, but sometimes, like, there is no intention. Sometimes you're making something and it then becomes a good thing or a bad thing. Um, the one that I can think most of is the uh, bomb, um, the person who made the atomic bomb, uh, the hydrogen bomb. I don't think. If I'm not mistaken, he originally wasn't intending on making a bomb, at least not to that to that extent. Um, yes, he was, I think it was like trying to find another source of energy. And then it just so happens that he came across this and yeah, and then it was used for not the greatest things um, in the world. I'll go more deep into that on like the actual episode and now I'll circle back because I have to like fact check myself and stuff I'm not quite done doing the research on it yet that's why um well that's one of the reasons why it's not being released today the other reason is because so like I mentioned like this is I feel like I mentioned this before if not I've definitely mentioned it to the people around me closest to me Doing this podcast is a challenge. It's a challenge for me to be vulnerable. It's a challenge for me to practice my public speaking skills and and my communication skills. And it's tough. I feel so backstory. Um when I was growing up. I was never the type of person that cared about what anybody thought or had to say. Uh, most of the times I didn't even think twice about what I wanted to say or how I was going to behave. Like I am who I am. And whenever I, I said what I was going to say and I behaved in my way, I took full responsibility for it, whether it hurt your feelings or it didn't hurt your feelings or whatever it is, it just is, Right. Um, I was never afraid to have conversations that were difficult or challenging or, you know, um, emotional. I'm not afraid of those things. It's quite natural to me. If you have a problem, I always thought it was your responsibility to tell me that you had a problem with me. Um, and if I had a problem, believe me, I would go and tell you that something wasn't okay. It's just the type of person I was growing up and I say was because I acknowledge that as I've grown up more and more as an adult and I've had to be in more professional roles and stuff it it's gotten harder um I've developed like some form of social anxiety in the sense that like it's made it hard for me to connect with people and and feel confident being authentically myself and being okay with saying things that back when I was a kid I wouldn't think twice I said it and I said it and moved on and it's been it's been challenging and these last few days that's what I've been reflecting on and trying to figure out when in my life did that mindset switch and why it switched, right? Um, I learned about myself that that was like in college where that mindset switched. I guess I, I wanted to be like accepted and... <laughs> I wanted to be perceived as, as a specific type of person and stuff. And all of that, 
all of it just ended up accumulating to negative thoughts about myself and thinking that like I wasn't good enough or that I was incredible enough to talk on certain things um, or that I was I was mean or just because I I said what I needed to say um, whether that person liked it or not I always thought that and I still I still do think that and I'm I'm working back towards finding a balance right because the I do agree there are times where I I can be a little bit bruca I can be toca um very harsh with the way I say things but when I say harsh things I never doubt that what I'm saying is incorrect like I think three four times things before I say them and especially if it's going to be something insulting or mean to someone I try to pick my words as wisely as possible however I do realize that even even with those choice of words sometimes they could still be a little bit harsh and I'm the type of philosophy that like I have a philosophy that sometimes that's what people need to hear they need to hear the harsh truth because sugarcoating doesn't help you. It doesn't help uh, that person grow or acknowledge that what they're doing or what they're saying um, is not okay. Because that's most of the times when I'm harsh, it's me calling out something that is just like, dude, that's that's not cool, right? Anyways, getting back to the point, the main episode of today's is is that connection it's identifying what to me brought on my social anxiety and what I think others can relate to when it comes to that social anxiety and it really boils down to just being afraid to be vulnerable, to be misunderstood. And I also feel like you're afraid to be challenged, right? Nobody likes to be challenged. Like if they, if you say something, you don't want somebody to come back and say, no, you're wrong. Or I don't really think that that's the right way. I think this is the other way. I think that's a challenge. Nobody likes to be challenged when they say something right nobody likes to be spoken back to they want um people to just take what they said as is i also feel and i was i was discussing this with one of my um one of my friends the other day connecting with somebody it's difficult it's difficult because you're being vulnerable you're allowing others to see who you are and what you think and connecting authentically connecting connecting takes patience right Uh, why do I say patience because you sometimes you're going to have to explain things to people sometimes you're going to have to listen to what someone else has to say even if you don't think they're right you still have to make the space for them to say that which brings me to my second point you gotta to connect with somebody authentically you have to make the space to listen to them you have to be open-minded to listen to them and truly accept and listen to what it is that they're saying um to get to so that you can have like a a meaningful conversation so that you can have a conversation where maybe there is no right and wrong but it's just learning it's more of a an exploratory conversation something where you're both learning from each other and that's 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 hard that's hard to do especially in this day and age where nobody has patience for one another 
you need kindness. That's that was another thing that that came to mind. Like you need kindness to be able to connect authentically with somebody. <laughs> Guys, it's impossible. It's impossible to be a hundred percent on the same page as everybody. Like even those closest to you, there are gonna be moments where you have differences. It's only normal. And if you're not, then you're not being honest. If you're not finding differences amongst each other, then you're not being honest with yourself and with them. Differences are not the end of the world. We thrive on our differences. It's what allows us to learn and grow from each other. It's the different perspectives that allow us to see things in in unique ways so that we can understand people. And that takes kindness. That takes patience. That takes making space to listen to them and not just talk at them, not just li- like say what it is that you need to say and move on. It's you say what you need to say, obviously in a respectful way, because if you start screaming at people or you start disrespecting people, immediately they're shutting down. But you're you're creating that space. You're allowing them to speak. And you're speaking honestly. You're not just saying yes to agree with them so you can move on to the next point. And like whether they listen to what you had to say or not, you just, you said it and then you were good and then you moved on. No, connecting with someone is finding some form of understanding. And that's a challenge. It's been a challenge for me lately because, not because I don't make space for people to listen, like for me to listen to others because I, I love listening to different perspectives and and points of view. I think it's one of the most fascinating things we can do as humans. It's how we all interpret information, interpret the world differently, even though we could have had the same experiences. Like one of my favorite um, like mind... Uh, I think it's like called like mind game. No, it's not mind games. It's like, oh, a thought experiment. Like one of my favorite thought experiments is like, imagine you had two twins. You had a set of twins and they grew up exactly the same. I, and even though they're identical genetically, their experiences are different and who they're going to be is different because how they relate to everybody else is different. No matter how genetically similar you are, at the end of the day, like this twin's experience experience is not the same as this twin's experience. Why? Because just with the simple first relationship that they have, which is each other, like each other as siblings, she's not her own sister or she's not her own, uh, he's not her his own brother. Like she's her sister and she is her sister. They're not each other's sisters. So it's not the same right there. It's like the first moment is a different experience. The way that their parents probably treat them are completely different. And so that molds your personality, that molds your behavior. And even though they most likely have similarities to the most part, there is going to be moments where they differ in their points of view and in their understanding and conceptualization of the world. It's just normal. It's natural. And I think that's one of the beauties and like the the privileges that we have as human beings. That being said, though, it's hard, even though that's one of my favorite things to do, Um, and it's like, listen to other people's stories and how they understand the world and, and have those communication, like communicative moments with them and, and have that insight into how their mind works. At the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's challenging for me to do that. It's why I take all the pauses that I do. It's why when I'm nervous, I just start laughing and giggling and, and I don't know what to say. And 
I'm sure you guys have already picked up on it from the few interviews I have released thus far. And I'm going to be releasing other interviews that I had already pre-recorded before I've got into the mindset, which you'll notice, which are the the old ones, because I'll have my long hair. The newer ones are really the ones that I'm doing like, you know, um, actively. So you're getting active feedback from me and active trying like after I've listened to so many of the episodes and trying to um, get better and implement some of the the notes I've taken away from listening. So my ums, like cutting back my ums and the rights, all of that is part of this journey. And so you'll see that. But like I mentioned, the connecting, the connecting is is the challenge for me is is trying to find because I, ah, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, I feel like I am. I'm not the type of person that just goes up and has a whatever type of conversation. I don't like having whatever conversations. Like uh <laughs> like shallow conversations, I guess. And that's not shallow in a meaning in a in a in a negative connotative way. It's just shallow as in like how's the weather type of conversation. You know? Like that's shallow. That's like a oh. Let's, we got nothing else to talk about. We have nothing else in common. Let's talk about the weather, which is something we're both experiencing. It's a great initial, I guess, but that's not the type of conversations I'm interested. That's not who I am. When I meet somebody, I immediately want to go into who makes you, you, like what makes you who you are? What are your perspectives on like, uh, for me, one of my favorite topics and ways that I understand somebody is, and it's like the, the theological mindset. Where do you see yourself in relation to the universe? How do you see yourself in relation to the universe? Like, for example, do you think there is an all-powerful God do you not? Do you think there's multiple gods? Uh, what do you think the meaning of life is? What is your values? What are your, you know, what are your, what, where's your self-awareness in terms of what are some things you, you, uh, you've gone through that were challenges and how did you overcome them? Like, those are the type of conversations I love having. Like, it's where I feel we're genuinely and authentically ourselves, where we're all vulnerable and we can genuinely connect. Um, because who who in this life hasn't had hardships? Not all of us can relate to having some happy moments. Not all of us can relate to having a family. Not all of us can relate to having moves over our heads or a car or a job or whatever. Whatever brings you happiness in this life, not all of us can relate to that. But I bet all of us can find something where we've been there when it comes to feeling sad, feeling hurt, feeling betrayed, jealous, anger. Those are all emotions, like raw, raw emotions that we can all relate to, I promise you, have any conversation with anybody and they will tell you, yeah, I've had despair in my life. I've had sadness in my life. I've had anger in my life. It's normal. And I think it's in those emotions that we can authentically connect with each other. An authentic connection, like it's not easy because it's going to suck. Because you're going to cry, you're going to laugh, you're going to be vulnerable, you're going to be open to other people judging you because you're you're trying to be honest and open. But man, does it pay off. 
does it pay off to know that you're surrounded by people that understand you? They may not have walked in the same shoes that you have. They may not 100% understand your context. But man, they get close to it. And I think sharing moments like that, sharing philosophical and, and deep moments like that with people is what really brings us back to earth and it helps us stay grounded and it helps us stay humble and it helps us be kind empathetic to others and in the empathy in the kindness we can make something better we can enjoy our time here in this reality in this world in the civilization society that we've created it's in the kindness it's in the empathy it's in making space for other people to be them and vice versa, making space for yourself also to be you. And just, obviously with respect, guys. Like when I say be you, that doesn't mean you get angry and you throw a chair at somebody. Like that's absurd. Let's let's be honest. Let's be, you know, practical. But if you're angry, it's okay to be angry. Be angry. Be angry and then let it go. Because it's already in the past. You had your moment. You were upset. You said what you needed to say. You communicated that you were angry. And you can move on. And you grow from it. That's it. Anyways. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to... Next episode is with Breakthrough Dance Company. Uh, she is my baby sister. She's a super cool human, um, a dancer. She currently lives in Japan. It'll be a nice uh, conversation with her. I hope you enjoy listening to that. Uh, and then after that, I will release the good versus evil episode. But I, like I mentioned earlier, aside from, you know, I still want to finish some research stuff um, and I'll circle back to uh, the the bomb conversation. Um, I wanted to say this and I wanted to, to do this episode before releasing that because good versus evil, it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. What's good to you is evil to someone else and vice versa. As Ralph Walder Elmerson, Elmo, uh, oof, sorry, Ralph Walder, Waldo Emerson said in his book, Self-Reliance, or in his essay, Self-Reliance, good and bad are but names, very readily transferable to this or that. The only right is what is after my constitution. The only wrong is what is against it. In other words, there is no such thing as right. There is no such thing as wrong. It's just perspective, the way you relate to someone, the way you can connect with someone, and the way you empathize and can see things from somebody else's perspective and shoes and context. So just food for thought so that when you do listen to good versus evil, you keep that in mind. Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate you listening. Um, write to me. Don't hesitate to reach out if you're interested in doing a guest spot with me. I am a work in progress. We all are. My lovely, beautiful humans. I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. Stay creative. <laughs>